Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Today is Monday of the Holy Week. The first reading from the book of Isaiah presents before us the song of the suffering servant in the background of the exile in Babylon. 600 years before the birth of Jesus, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian emperor entered into Jerusalem, destroyed the temple and the city and defeated the people and took the cream of the society into exile. At this crucial time in the history of Israel, God sends his servant. Two basic characteristics of this servant are humility and obedience. The prophet is God's favored one. He is God's agent. He will accomplish God's plan. It is easy to realize that all the things spoken about the suffering servant are being accomplished in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That is why the church prescribes these readings during the Holy Week for our prayer and meditation. We also realize that the message of liberation is applicable not only to the people of Israel but to all the nations at all times at any given time. Jesus Christ is the Messiah not only of the Jewish people but of all the nations. In fact, the Jews had rejected Jesus while the non-Jewish race has accepted him as the one and only savior of the world. The gospel reading of the day presents an event that took place in the life of Jesus six days before the Paschal festival. That could be one of the reasons why Holy Mother Church presents this particular passage six days before the Easter. What is that event? In what way does it prepare us for the passion, death and resurrection of Jesus? Lazarus and his sisters Martha and Mary invite Jesus over a dinner. Mary enters the dining room where Martha waits upon Jesus and her brother Lazarus. This dinner that took place in Bethany six days before the Easter is indicative of the Passover meal that every Jew is supposed to celebrate in remembrance of the Exodus event. She brings along a pound of very costly ointment, pure nard, and anoints the feet of Jesus. She wipes them with her hair. The reaction of Judas Iscariot may sound strange, but then it reveals his identity. His apparent love and concern for the poor reveals his greed for money and no regard for the master and the sinner who repents and expresses her devotion to the one who has the power to forgive sins. Jesus foretells that this woman would prepare his body for the burial. Later, we will realize that on Good Friday, when Jesus died, it was already too late in the evening and there wasn't much time left between his death and his burial. Therefore, the anointing of Jesus' feet by this woman is an anticipation of what is going to come. Both these events, my dear brothers and sisters, do convey a convincing message to all of us that nothing happens by chance. The Lord God has a definite plan for all of us as he has had his plan cut out for his only son, Jesus. 
Judas Iscariot was so concerned about the expensive ointment used by the sinner woman to anoint the body of Jesus. The cost was 300 denarii. One denarius was the wage of a man on a day. 300 denarii would signify almost the salary of a man for one full year. If an ordinary worker earns about rupees 500 a day, 300 denarii would amount to 1,62,500 rupees. Of course, this amount is by all means an enormous one as one cannot afford to spend on a perfume. But then, this is the extent of love that Mary has for Jesus. When we love someone very deeply, we don't calculate the money we spend on that person. In other words, her gesture should help us reflect on how much we ourselves love or value Jesus. We should also introspect into a significant question. Am I willing to give so much of time and wealth for my Jesus? If you believe that Jesus dwells in every person, he certainly lives in every poor we come across. Extending a small little help to a needy person is a help that is given to Jesus himself. Jesus said that the poor are always with us. If this is true, then it must be also true that Jesus is present in every poor person. As we sum up the reflections for the Holy Week Monday, let us keep just three points for our reflections. The first one, humility and obedience at all times and at all levels, both in the family and religious circles, are bound to bring God's abundant blessings upon us. The second, we have to always find new ways to draw closer to Jesus and repent for our sins. And the third, our love for the poor and needy is equated with our love for Jesus himself. Let us pray that God may keep us always close to him especially during this holy week, that we may enter deeply into the mystery of Jesus' passion, death and resurrection. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.